So before explaining what we did with Huawei this year in order to try to innovate in the cloud system for the TV, let me explain a little bit who we are and what we do. So TF1 started more than 40 years ago as a simple TV channel. And we are now a multimedia, multi-channel, multi-platform TV network. So what are our strategic goals right now? TF1 has always been the leader on French TV in terms of audience share. And obviously, we intend to maintain that leadership. However, we all know that the traditional television faces a strong competition from digital services, which particularly attract younger viewers. Therefore, we place a strong emphasis on diversifying our activities in a way to improve our content creation and monetization capabilities. We need to be at the cutting edge of technology so as to be among the leaders on digital platforms, mobile and social networks. In order to do so, we are helping funding a selection of startups that are relevant to our activity. We are investing in some more established companies that help us in our business. And we also have started recently a Media for Equity program. And we are also improving our position as a producer of original content for our own use, but also for selling to other TV channels. Moreover, our viewer demand for new services is always increasing. And we must be able to answer at a reasonable cost. And also, we must regularly improve the tools that we provide to our staff and partners. And especially, this includes, for instance, demand for greater mobility. So today's question is, how can the cloud technology help us to reach those goals? I'd like to start by examining quickly what are the long time trends in the TV operations. The picture on the left is a bit old. I took it from an ad for the NBC affiliate in Washington, DC. But this is still the type of crew we and other TV channels send on the field in order to gather content for the new story we produce. It's more than 40 kilograms of equipment. But what is important is that nowadays, we can also shoot the same kind of image with a smartphone. The smartphone just fits in the pocket of a single person and can transmit across the planet thanks to the 3G and 4G networks. There, there is only one condition. You must shoot horizontally, because please consider that the TV screen is horizontal. Other than that, the progress when it comes to the picture in itself is incredible. And we can start to identify a trend in our, in our, in our industry. Software is replacing the whole hardware. In this case, the processing used in the smartphone to improve the picture quality replaces the big lenses and the big sensors we use on the, on the broadcast camera. And another example is that, for instance, the stabilization algorithm is replacing the strength of the cameraman's shoulder. The second example is for an editing equipment. This kind of editing equipment was used in the 90s and early, to, in early 2000s, at a time when the latest computer could barely display a low-quality video in, in a tiny window. Nowadays, as you probably know, PC-based systems are 10 times cheaper and 10 times more powerful than the previous generation. Last example is that we gave up progressively tape recording. So giving up workflows based on tape and tape recorders was really the biggest transformation in the way we work today. The servers have dramatically improved the, the capability for us to work in group and to collaborate in content sharing. Also, in the meantime, TV has gone from black and white to color, has gone from analogy to digital, has gone from SD to HD, and now even Ultra HD. But given the ominous software-based solutions, all the elements are now in place for an even greater transformation, the adoption of cloud technology in, broadcast structure in broadcasting infrastructures. So what are the cloud infrastructure challenges for us in the media and the broadcast industry? First of all, and it has been mentioned earlier this morning, it's security. Having safe infrastructure is an utmost necessity for us. Just after the banking industry, the media industry is the most frequent target of attacks. In a context of increasing threats, it is very difficult to make safer infrastructure than the old closed system that you saw in the previous slide. Second, storage and network. Our typical need is to store approximately 200,000 hours of content. It's in the range of a few petabytes. Now, current IT storing solutions cover these needs perfectly. To give you an idea, 
a raw HD video file weighs about 150 megabits per second. It means the short movie you have seen at the introduction is about a 4 gigabytes file. So we have to manage a reasonable number of files, but each single file is quite huge. And remember that those scores are for HD resolution. Now consider that the 4K, which is coming, will be quadrupling the number of pixels and will also increase the number of frames per second. And then, it's not finished, after that, we might need to quadruple again because Japan is intending, Japan industry is intending to launch the 8K technology for the Olympics in Tokyo. Then, compute. In order to perform audio and video processing, and as well as managing all the databases that are challenge, managing our medias, we need solid computing and also graphics capabilities. We have the back office has been addressed for some time now, with since a couple of years, numerous realizations and projects that were performed on mutualized and virtualized infrastructure. Those infrastructures gave us higher density and ease of maintenance. But now, this year, we wanted to innovate in a different area, and with the help of Huawei, we innovated on the front office side. So remember the laptop editing computer in the previous slide? This is still a high-end laptop. This is not a cheap laptop, so that is a bit of a problem for us. We own, we have, you may have seen some pictures, we own a 24 hours a day, seven days a week news channel. It's called LCI. LCI was previously on a pay TV, but earlier this year, we, were, uh, we became free to wear. And now we are facing a new competition on the free to wear market. So for the new season that started just this Monday, we had a key project of a major renovation of the technical and editorial system for the LCI. LCI has a team of 150 journalists, and we wanted to avoid investing in 150 high-end workstations, when only on average of 60 journalists are simultaneously, simultaneously working on a video editing task. Those workstations would have costed a lot of money and also would have constrained the journalist to fixed location because when you, are, when you need to work on a high-end workstation, you need to work where the workstation has been installed. For a long time, we thought that the only solution for this was to move progressively to the, to the solution with web clients. But there are still significant features of audiovisual applications that are not available as such. Despite promising technology like WebRTC, we still have uh, the need to use classic applications. So that's where the Fusion Cloud Desktop from Huawei helped us. By deploying Scene clients, it enabled us to remove uh, the need for having both strong back office, as we do, strong network to, to bring the high-res video stream to the client, and a strong client. We replaced that by concentrating the computing power in the data center as shared resources. We limited the investment to 60 host computers equipped with GPU and running virtual machines. And those 60 host com computers are accessible through 150 SYN clients. So as you guess, the SYN clients is a lot cheaper than a high-end high workstation. And we can even imagine now to be accessible on soft clients with Wi-Fi. So that really helps us in the mobility area. Very important to note is that it also improves security by providing audiovisual tools and office tools on the same user screen, but on, on separate virtual machines. So it allows us to totally separate in the back office the office uh, tools and the broadcast video tools. So that improves the security for us. And the, VDI, the Huawei VDI solution proposed the best qualities on such crucial functions for us, like video playback. Obviously, we need a very smooth video playback and perfect picture and sound synchronization on the remote desktop. Moreover, I think we really laid the basis for an intelligent system which will enable us in the future to better use these resources. For instance, for other tasks at night, when almost nobody is in the newsroom. In the future, we hope to continue in our fructuous cooperation with Huawei and with the relevant software vendors in order to use all this infrastructure in the most efficient way. With the emergence of cloud-compatible TV application and software-defined infrastructure, I hope we'll soon be able to create a complete TV system as easily as it is to create a web system today. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And maybe let's meet again next year in order to talk about the improvements that I'm sure we will implement since then. Thank you very much.